Hello, this is Smita Kumar and you're watching Medi Circle. Today we have another healthcare startup and we'll be talking about how that particular startup is innovating the way healthcare is consumed. So hi, we have Pooja Gupta with us. Uh, she's the co-founder of Purple Dogs and she will be telling us more about the innovations, especially what they have brought into uh, prescriptions and other things because a lot of time the digitalization of healthcare is hampered because doctors are, I mean, it seems very difficult for them to maintain eye to eye contact also and write a prescription also. So that has been a problem all so many years. Let's find it out from Pooja how they are uh, solving this particular problem. So, hi, Pooja, welcome to MediCircle. Hi, thank you for having us. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure be speaking on this forum. So same here, Pooja, and uh, let the audience know like how uh, Purple Dogs was started and what exact problem it is solving. Okay, so I think Purple Dogs is one of the oldest uh, in this domain. We launched Purple Dogs back in 2011. I would say it was a pre-WhatsApp era where even the doctors that we targeted, they did not even have laptops in their hospital. They were, I remember doctors did not even have email IDs back then. And at that time we faced this issue uh, on, on a personal front wherein uh, Deepak's mother, my mother-in-law, she was suffering from cancer and she was being treated for a very long period of time, for three and a half years. And how it happens is like every time she was uh, due for a visit, We'll take a day or two and organize her records and carry three bags full of records, even though she was being treated in the very same hospital every time. And in cases of emergencies, one person has to run to go through the documents and just not the documents, they were CDs, they were scan reports, everything. And for them to be easy. So this question, I was, I remember I had just come back. We had just relocated from US uh we wanted to do something in india but we were still working so deepak was working with his uh, uh company in us and i had taken a job in pune and i used to accompany my mother-in-law for the treatments and i used to be the person who used to carry those loads of records and every time uh there would be a surgery or something and i would have to furnish a last scan cd and they would not even know the dates and then this question propped up in my head that we engineers, we boast so much about we being the pillars, the IT pillars of other countries, especially US. What are we doing for our own country? Why are we not trying to change the situation over here? So thankfully, we had a foot in the door. We belong to a family of doctors ourselves and we had good access to the fraternity. We did for two years. We talked to multiple hospitals in Pune as well as in Vadodara. Uh, we we tried to find why the existing solutions, they were not expensive at all. So HMS solutions were very simple. They're still very cheap. Why they do not have a penetration, why they are not used beyond the registration desk. And that's how we found out that solutions are difficult. They are not made with Indian doctors keeping in mind. Over here, uh, unlike US where a doctor spends 30 minutes per patient, over here it is two minutes or three minutes patient in that amount of time and he's got a huge queue his staff has to be more uh more aware of how to treat the patient rather than being the tech savvy True. plus tech savvy staff even till today it's it's like a luxury for hospitals right it is not their main concern i would say their main concern is to provide a better health care so somehow that the whole solution PCs did not have access. Internet is still a problem, right? So at that time, we launched a very simple service for them wherein we said, okay, just outsource your patient record digitization to us and forget it. I remember we had question marks raised. Nobody had even heard about it. So for six months, Deepak said, okay, forget about the price. Give me one record, two record, 10 record, whatever you want. And I will give you a search engine in which you will just put up the patient name and you'll get the digitized copy. And that's how we educated the doctors in Baroda. And we were lucky enough within a span of 12 months, 
we we were serving more than 20 hospitals in baroda oh wow that's and and the only marketing we did at that time was the word of mouth our customers are so pleased with us that even today for every new it requirement purple dogs is what they approach to okay and that is how we have been so from i so we i think we are the only players in the country who have organized the whole ipd digitization even till today day no other players are there organized players are there there are scan houses there are local scan vendors who do it for the hospital but we have a service wherein you we create a search engine for doctors wherein they could uh, absolutely customizable service if they want diagnosis to be tagged if they want uh, doctor's name to be tagged and they can do complete analytics so whenever a patient comes in they have to just put the patient name and the whole history just pops up in front of them okay okay and from there, the organic growth started and we ventured into OPD, we ventured into PHR and everything else. So what is like the USP, the unique value proposition that Purple Docs is offering? What are the e-prescription platforms like we have Docsper, we have HealthClix? Okay, speaking specifically of the e-prescription or other products which within our brand, we have like four, five products. Our USP has always been the UX plus the ability to customize. So all my services are absolutely customizable by the doctors because we understand that they need an absolutely easy interface. They have their own form, there's no standardization. A pediatrician sitting in Delhi will have his own type of fields. He will enter his own kind of data and pediatrician sitting in Mumbai will capture something else. So we have the ability to design on the fly an interface that they need. And our USP has always been to reduce the amount of work. We don't increase the workload. So if you will see the counterparts in America, physician burnout is a massive problem because see something is there on the left menu, something is there on the right menu, something is on the top menu. <laughs> Doctors can't, they have to treat the patient rather than search for the apt menu. So what we do is we say, okay, whatever you want to see, just tell us that and it will be coming in your sequence. That's it. There is zero learning curve. That is what we have. So they, the other counterparts that you're talking about, for example, Docsper, that's a different solution altogether. It is a hardware-based solution where you have a pen, but you have to write. Our USP has been, we reduce the effort. So we, we enable them to make templates. We enable them to, if the patient is coming up for a follow-up, doctor doesn't have to write the same set of medicines. He can just stick the last prescription. It is there. He can create templates, for example, a COVID template. COVID medicines will be prescribed. So the, we want them to talk to the patient more and spend time looking at the tab less and still be able to have a compliant prescription delivered. And that is why I think we have got one of the highest sticking uh, stickability. Our doctors who are using our EMR, they are generating on an average 10,000 prescription per month and they just cannot live without it. That's great. Because the solution is designed by them. So definitely like healthcare is so volatile and again, there is an absence of uh, true standardization is not there. So definitely yeah. scope of customization is there. And I think definitely those startups would win the game who are offering a very customized kind of a solution, not to just the doctors, hospital providers, everyone who can actually brand it as per their own uh, logic and policies. Uh, moving on to my next question, uh, like how many clients you have benefited because you have been uh, I mean, offering these solutions since a long time. Yes, so using all our products since 2011, we have a whooping 95 lakh plus health records on our platform till date. Mm -hmm. We have served more than 150 hospitals. Help. Our solutions are being used by more than 500 doctors today. That's great. And how like you have also received 2.7 crores of funding in its angel round from Kelly Gamma found funds and also from lead angels. So how has the funds been utilized and uh, what are the next plans, especially in funding? Yeah, so when we raised the funding back in 2015, we had only one product line and we were only operating in Avadodra. So we used the fund to expand our footprint. We expanded to 16 cities, including Delhi, Bangalore. We launched three more products since then, and we are using, uh, we are still growing in terms of our product offering. That's, that's good to know. So like how were like your revenues, especially in FY 2022 and what you're planning to close at FY 2023? 
Yeah, so I would divide that whole thing into two phases. There was a pre-COVID phase and there is a post-COVID <laughs> phase. So pre-COVID, we were... Like, has it accelerated uh, the sales? Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, it has hit the uh, medical fraternity the hardest, I would say, because there were only one kind of patient. There were only COVID patients. Everything else took a step back. Patients were not moving out of their house. Yes. So it has really hit the market badly. And plus, we also could not uh, jeopardize the health conditions of our own people. So our services did get affected for sure. Pre-COVID, we were growing on an at, on year-on-year -year basis up to 100% growth we were showing. Post COVID, we have so we used the time in COVID to develop new products and offering. So our footprint has increased, and now we are kind of back on track. And we are again this year we are targeting a hundred percent growth. That's great. So and uh, like, how are your goals and future expansion expansion plans? As you're already there in so many cities in India, so anything specific you're targeting? to scale it up and uh, to the uh, go to the market thing because in south also digitalization is there so what kind of territories and areas you are planning to scale up so we are targeting both horizontal and longitudinal growth so as far as the emr product has come it has completely stabilized so we are expanding the markets we are exploring mumbai and delhi and noida with that and along with that we are also coming up with the b2c product which will bridge the gap between the doctors and the patients. And that we're about to launch within a month or so. You just wait for the news. Uh -huh, great. So like this would be something for the doctors and the patients to interact on. That is true. That is true. So it will be uh, bridging the gap. It will make the patients uh, book the appointments more seamlessly, uh, provide leads to the hospitals and it, so the benefit has to come to the patient somehow, right? Yes. The yeah. digitization is still not benefiting the patients. So we are making a platform using which the patient can come and see their own history and see their own records. And thankfully, NDHM has become a big player into that because, yes. because of the NDHM, every uh, startup which was working in silo, there is hope that we all will unite and eventually help the patient. Definitely. So any piece of advice for budding entrepreneurs, especially you want to do something in health tech? Uh, it is a difficult, I would say, market, unlike other markets which are driven by demand. You have to create demand. So be very careful. You have to relate to the need. You have to study the market. Things may look very lucrative from outside. I would say everybody who wants to be an entrepreneur should at least work for a startup. Because this journey is not that smooth. It needs a lot of perseverance, a lot of hard work, commitment, and a zeal. Because most, most of the places when it's driven by demand, you know, things are the journey becomes much more easier. Over here, uh, as you rightly said when in the introduction, the doctors are the trickier ones because their main aim is to provide the best of the health services. Digitization takes a back step. So if you are entering health tech as specific to that, you have to be extremely you have to relate to the problem and you have to do your research. So there are a lot of people who would say, because doctors can't visualize stuff, unfortunately. They're not that tech savvy, right? So for them, they would not their heads, yes, I would need something like that. But when you present the solution, they may not adapt to it. Adaptability is the question. Yeah. So you have to do your POC, you have to do your groundwork, you have to do your research, and then enter the sphere. True, but like as our current IBF report, like as healthcare market is definitely expanding in leaps and bounds, it is going to reach $372 billion by the end of 2022. And in that, how is this prescription market taking place? So the global prescribing market size is projected to reach USD 3.3 billion, that is $3.3 billion by 2025 from $1.2 billion USD in 2020. Definitely, it's a big job. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also announced the launch of the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, which is actually facilitating so, so many startups to make healthcare more digital, more accessible to the end users, that is the patients. And he also asserts as the potential to make a revolutionary shift in India's healthcare facilities. But when we talk about actually e-prescriptions and other things like that, we need to definitely consider the 
abysmal uh, ratio, which is like Indian, I mean, when we are talking about India, the doctor's patient ratio, at, as per my latest stats, it is 1 is to 834. That means one doctor for 834 patients. So definitely we cannot have that kind of a Western country mindset when we are proposing our products. Because here the doctors are lesser and there are so many huge patients. So we definitely need to digitalize the e-prescription market in such a way that we are trying to actually, the doctors are trying to see more and more patients at the same time and also making the prescriptions digitalized so that the analytics can be done and other things can be done. I think uh, Purple Doc is also doing a great job in this particular domain. And I wish uh, Pooja and Deepak all the best for all your future endeavors. And thank you so much for joining us today at Medisa. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be speaking to you. Thank you. Most welcome.